we are at AP Review. This is 2016 ABBC Free Response 3. Uh, the figure here, uh, much better on the actual AP problem than my terrible drawing, uh, is the graph of a piecewise linear function f uh, from negative 4 to 12 uh, for the values of x. g of x is the integral from 2 to x of f of t dt. Part a, does g have a relative maximum, uh, sorry, minimum, maximum, or neither at x equals 10? Justify your answer. Okay, so what we have to do to figure this out, right, so the question is, uh, at x equals 10, so the thing they're asking us, um, does g have a max, min, or neither? That's the thing they're asking us. So what we need to do to talk about extrema for g is we need to look at g prime, right? So normally, if we were asked to find extrema for g, we'd look at g prime, right? So we essentially need a g prime of x uh, sign chart with critical points, right? That's that's what we need to use. So first thing we should probably do is figure out how g is related to f. So I know that g of x is the integral from 2 to x of f of t dt. Well, that means that g prime of x is the derivative of this thing, which using the second fundamental theorem of calculus is just going to end up being an f of x because uh, these guys cancel and I get f of x uh, times the derivative of x, which is a 1, minus f of 2 times the derivative of 2, which is a 0. So g prime of x is f of x. So that's important. So we're looking at the given graph, right? So g prime of x is the y values on the given graph. That's the leap we need to make, right? So I look at 10, and I see that at x equals 10, right, g prime of 10 does equal 0, right, because that's the y value on the given graph, but g prime of uh, g prime of x doesn't change sign, right, doesn't change sign at x equals 10, right? g is decreasing because g prime is negative, right, so g prime of x is less than 0 before 10, right, before x equals 10, right, meaning g is decreasing, and g prime of x is still less than 0 after x equals 10, after x equals 10, meaning g is still decreasing, so what we've got is a saddle, so the answer is neither, right, um, so the answer is it does not have uh, a relative min or a relative max, because what we've got is a saddle, we've got decreasing, levels out, decreasing, that's a saddle, right, so our answer is going to be neither, but again, you need to link it to what you can see with your eyes, right? So uh, you can see with your eyes that that f of x is below the axis. So because, uh, so g prime, which is the same as f of x, right? So f of x is less than zero for both of those. So uh, it is neither. All right, part b. Uh, does the graph of g have a point of inflection at x equals 4? Justify your answer. All right, cool. So again, we're going to go back to what we're being asked, and then we're going to tie it into what we can see with our, our eyeballs. So uh, the question is, does g have a point of inflection at x equals 4? Right, that's the question. So we have to start by asking ourselves, what does a point of inflection mean? Well, the definition of a point of inflection, right, would be that g double prime of x equals zero or doesn't exist and, and this is the big thing, changes sign. So we now have to figure out how the given graph is related to g double prime. Well, g double prime is the derivative of g prime, right? So my g double prime of x is going to be f prime of x, which is the slope of the given graph. So let's look at what's happening at four. So at four, Right, so g double prime of 4 does not exist, right? f prime of 4 does not exist, right? Um, because f of x is not differentiable at x equals 4, right? That's a point. And on this side, right, on the interval from 2 to 4, f prime of x, which is the same as g double prime of x, is positive, right? This is a positive slope. And on the interval from 4 to 6, f prime of x, which is the same as g double prime of x, is less than 0. So yes, we have a point of inflection because g double prime of 4 equals 0. Uh, I'm sorry, does not exist. My bad. 
Uh, and G double prime changes sign at four. So sure enough, we do have a point of inflection. All right. Um, part C. Find the absolute minimum value of uh, and the absolute maximum value of G on the interval from negative four to 12. Justify your answer. Okay. So let's go back to what it means to be those things, right? So remember, and we might as well put the relationship here, right? We know that g of x is that integral from 2 to x of f of t dt, and we know that g prime of x is f of x, and we know that g double prime of x is f prime, right? It's worth keeping those where we can see them. Okay, so here's the thing. Extrema can only occur at certain points, right? So when we do part c, in order to have extrema, the ask is, is what's the absolute max and the absolute min on that window from 0 to 8, or sorry, not 0 to 8, negative 4 to 12. Sorry, I've been doing too many problems today. So in order to find extrema, we need to find, uh, so, so this is for G, right, not F. So we need to think about what we know about extrema, right? The definition of finding extrema, right, is that we need uh, G critical points, right? And then we, so, so sort of the definition, it's not really the definition here. Uh, so what we need is we need when g prime of x equals 0, and then we need to figure out our possible critical points. Well, g prime is the same as f of x equals 0, right? So I look and say, oh, that's 1, 2, 3, 4 possible places, right? Uh, so there's there's three kinds of critical points. There's when, when your derivative is 0, right? And it seems to me that those happen at negative 2, 2, 6, and 10, right? The second kind of critical point is when g prime doesn't exist, right? But that would be f not existing, and that's not possible because f exists on this whole window. And the third kind of critical point are included endpoints, right? So in this case, I have endpoints at negative 4 and 12. So it seems to me that I have six possible critical points, right? Now, I can consider all of them if I want. It may or may not be. I think it's probably not as smart of a plan to consider all of them. I think it's smarter to take your critical points and make a quick sign chart and see uh, possible values. But yeah, it's up to you. So, um, I mean, we do already know that, uh, that these spots are saddles, right? So we saw that this one's a saddle, not a max or a min. So I can basically cross 10 off because it is a saddle, right? Because G, G prime doesn't change sign, right? And you don't have to but you could cross that off and you could make the same argument for two. Two is also a saddle because see how G prime uh, doesn't change sign. So if you want to find all the values you could, but my argument would be that the values you need to check, right, are X equals negative four, right, the end point, negative two, six, and 12, right? And if I check those four values, I'm going to be able to find the value of g at those values, and I'll be able to find which ones are the smallest or the largest. So these are my potential, these are my potential maxes and mins. And I can figure out, because those are all the maxes and mins, I can figure out which one is the largest or smallest by plugging in those values. Cool. So let's go ahead and do that. So now we need to find some values for g, right? So g of negative 4 is the integral from 2 to negative 4 of f of t dt. So that means that you're starting here and going back to here. So the thing to keep in mind is that this is a reversed integral, right? Like it's backwards. It's got flipped bounds. So if I want to put them in the standard order so that I feel comfortable, I'd put a negative in front and go from negative 4 to 2 of f of t dt. Now, the funny thing about the f graph is that it's the same triangle over and over and over again, right? This triangle has a height of 4, or in this case, negative 4, and a base of 2. So all of these triangles, this one, and 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 this one, they're all the same shape. Each one of these triangles, right, so each one of these triangles, whether above or below the axis, we can actually ignore for a sec, right, this thing, sorry, inching over, this thing has an area of one half the base, two times the height, four, so each one of these is, four, is a four point total, right? So whichever way you want to think about it, right, um, so if you want to think about just going backwards, when you go backwards, the signs are opposite. So normally being above the axis makes you positive and below makes you negative. But if you're integrating backwards, then those signs change. Or if you feel uncomfortable with that at all, you can just go forwards every time and put this minus in front. So essentially, this is a negative in front of this is a negative 4 and a positive 4 and another positive 4. So this whole thing nets a negative 4. G of negative 2 is going to be from here to here, right? 
Well, that's going to be the integral from 2 to negative 2 of f of t dt, which again is a backwards integral, right? So if you want, you can reverse the bounds, right, so that you feel comfortable and put a negative in front, and that's fine. Um, if you reverse the bounds, great. If you don't, also great. So each one of these is a four-unit box, so you end up getting a negative 8, right? Uh, g of 6 would be the integral from 2 to 6, and we've already established that those each of these is a 4, and I'm integrating forwards now, so that's an 8. And g of 12, I don't know quite what happened there. Uh, so g of 12, I already know this is an 8, right? Like when I was at an 8 when I got to 6, so I subtract 4. I subtract 4 again, right? So now I'm down to 0. And then I subtract 4, so I end up back down at negative 4, right? So what's happening here is that the only possible candidate for absolute max, right? Absolute max is the positive 8. And the candidate for the absolute min is the negative 8 because it's the smallest value. So I have an absolute max. So the absolute max is g of 6 equals 8. And the absolute min is g of negative 2 equals negative 8. All right, um, part D. Uh, for that same window from negative 4 to 12, uh, find all intervals where g of x is less than 0. Okay, so this is going to rely a little bit on that negative 4 as well, right? So this is mostly a logic thing, right? Um, so uh, I used a lot of colors. We're going to try using green this time. Okay, so here's the deal. I know that g of x, g of x is 0, uh, sorry, g of 2 is 0. And the reason I know g of 2 is 0, right, is because g of x is the area, sorry, wrong way, g of x is the area that I get when I integrate from 2 to x. So g of 2 has no width, so g of 2 is 0. So essentially, what's going to happen is I can figure out from the fact that g of 2 is 0, right, I'm adding positive value here. So I must be getting a positive for g, right? Because g was 0, and then I added 4, and I added another 4, right? Then I subtracted 4, but I'm still in the positive because I subtracted 4, but 8 minus 4 is still positive. And then I subtracted 4 again, and now I'm back to 0, right? Because again, my value went from 0 to add 4, right? Add 4 again, so now I'm up to 8 subtract 4, I'm now down to positive 4, subtract 4 again, I'm now down to 0 again. So I'm, this is another spot, g of 10 is also 0. Okay, so g of 10, that's not any of those numbers I just said. So g of 10 is also 0, right? And so, so I was positive in this whole window, and then I'm negative down here. So the first answer is I'm definitely negative, so g of x is less than, and they did say equal to, 0. It's less than or equal to 0 at 10, starting at 10, until 12, right? So that's the first window. Then if I work my way backwards, right, uh, I work my way backwards, and they did say specifically intervals, right? Uh, so I work my way backwards here. Now, because I'm going backwards, since this is all backwards integrating, these are actually negative 4s, right? Even though they're above the axis, they're going to be negative 4s. Right? And then I'm adding another 4, but since I had a negative 8, adding 4 keeps me negative. So I also get that I'm negative on the interval from negative 4 until 2. And those are the two intervals where I'm negative or 0, right? They specifically asked for the intervals. Uh, yeah, so they asked, they asked for intervals because someone could make an argument. Oh, no, 2's included, right? And 10's included. Nope, all good. Those are the intervals. So uh, the AP would take it either this way, or if you like this notation, 10 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 12, and negative 4 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 2. The end.